Welcome back. We're discussing the humanitarian crisis unfolding as Sri Lanka's three-decade-old civil war reaches what may be a turning point. From Strasbourg, I'm joined by Nirj Deva, a Sri Lankan-born British Member of Parliament, now a European Parliament Member. From Urbana, Illinois, Dr. Francis Boyle, Professor of International Law at the University of Illinois College of Law. And from Oslo, Norway's Minister for Development and the Environment, Eric Solheim, who played a part in the Norwegian delegation negotiating a truce in Sri Lanka's civil war. Let's get back to the discussion with a comment from uh, Dr. Boyle. I know you wanted to respond, sir, to some of the uh, points being made earlier on right well I think it's important to keep in mind uh, the timeline here of what happened there were reasonable good faith negotiations going on here uh, brokered in part by uh, Norway uh, to its credit at the beginning near the beginning of the negotiations the uh, LTTE indicated they would be prepared to consider a federal state for Sri Lanka uh, as the uh, right. outcome and then the uh, uh, Rajapaksa, President Rajapaksa, uh, came to power, uh, terminated these negotiations, terminated the ceasefire, uh, recently just terminated well, the services of Norway. Recently terminated the services of Norway uh, as the uh, honest true. broker here. And then, as uh, Mr. Solheim pointed out, uh, encouraged the Tamils to go into the Solfile so-called uh, no-fire zone, where they are now pounding them uh, with artillery tanks and also with uh, naval ships uh, as we speak today. Now, putting all that history aside, again, I, we have a humanitarian catastrophe on our hands, the lives of 50,000 people uh, at risk. We need an immediate ceasefire here on the part of the government of Sri Lanka and the Tamil Tigers, which, by the way, the Tigers did proclaim um, two weeks ago, then the uh, government of Sri Lanka for two days. We need to get back to the ceasefire, massive humanitarian uh, assistance to the people there, and then we could negotiate, for example, uh, an evacuation uh, of the Tigers uh, from Vani, very similar to what happened to the Palestine right. Liberation Organization uh, back in 1982 in Lebanon, uh, where the United States, uh, where 20,000 people were killed, the United States intervened and negotiated the evacuation of the PLO uh, from Beirut. Uh, I think this could be done, but it's going to require well, leadership by the United States, Britain, France, and India to do it. Well, let's get from, from Nirj Deva what prospect there is of the, the Sri Lankan government perhaps taking the higher road here in the interests of the uh, civilians and saying, yes, we will stop the shelling, stop the heavy artillery, uh, and give a chance for a, 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 an evacuation there, at least to, to help the humanitarian aid to come in. Riz, before we go to that, let's go back to what Pro Professor Boyle quite wrongly said. Uh, it, was, it was Ranil Vikramasinghe who offered... Uh, to have a broker ceasefire uh, with the Norwegian sponsorship. And it was the LTT who refused to allow Ranil Vikramasinghe to win again because they found him and his peace efforts a greater threat. And President Rajapaksa waited for one year while people were being blown up before he acted. Now, these are the facts, and you can go into any timeline and find that. So let's, let's not distort history. There's a lot of suffering going on. The country has suffered enough. And the political solution has to come. And the, both every, every faction is willing and ready and able to talk about a political set settlement around the table. But the LTT refused to come to the table. Eric knows this, I know this, and everybody who is involved knows it, except strangely, Professor Boyle. Well, but uh, Mr. Deva, what prospect is there of helping the, uh, the refugees right now? What can be done on the, at the humani well, humanitarian my, level my, to my try to help those? My principal job in Go the ahead. European Parliament is a coordinator for the International Development Committee, and I have oversight of the development budget, which is about 8 billion euro. And we are very mm -hmm. anxious to provide every sense of s support to the Sri Lankan authorities to give the right amount of food, medicine, water, and everything that is required to those people who have come out and are suffering. I now appeal to the LTT to allow the other peoples who they are holding hostage, release them so that you, they, they stop suffering. 
because we, there, the international community has goodwill to look after these people, give them the right ap appropriate measures of humanitarian assistance, and to give them the medicines they require now. But they can't be given okay. medicine if they're being ho held hostage behind guns. Let them come out, well, sure. let them come into the camps. Mm -hmm. There are Red Cross and Medicines on Frontier, and all the other people are ready to act. Okay. Sean's been waiting patiently in London with a question or comment. Sean, go ahead. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Nira. Just mm. to talk about these refugees. About 7 o'clock um, uh, UK time, just about uh, two hours ago, Channel 4 reported the abuse going inside the camp. And people inside, not outsiders, not NCT, nobody, inside the camp telling that it is a prison and no one's there to protect them. And there is an abuse going on, um, sexually abusing women, and three people got killed today. That's been reported inside the camp by Channel 4. And why the hell the Sri Lankan government is not letting anyone now, any, any of the agencies, any, any UN agencies or anyone now, but you are telling that everyone is waiting. Why don't you let them now and then protect those civilians and save them? They are, they, they are, there, is a, there, is, there are people without food there. And then they've all been, we just seen okay. it on the, on okay. the television. Okay, Sean, Sean, Sean let's, let's let Mr. Deva uh, respond. Let the minister respond. Go ahead, sir. Uh, do you want me to answer News that? Deva, sorry. So, sorry, yes, News I, Deva I, I'm, first, I'm yeah, in please. Strasbourg, so I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm in Strasbourg, so I have missed this Channel 4 news item. It has come as a bit of a surprise to me, if this is indeed the case. This needs to be verified. Mm -hmm. There are United, United Nations people there, the EU, ob EU team is there. I will get in touch with ECHO and our EU people to check whether this has happened within this camp. As we, as we understand it, there are some 200,000 people in that camp. So who, the three uh, ladies that we've been men mentioned just now, we need to find out. And I'm sure the Sri Lankan authorities will give the, the facts as they see uh, as to what happened. However, that does not preclude the fact that we are ready to assist. We are ready to go and do whatever we can to help the Sri Lankan authorities to give them the proper relief. That is our duty and that is what we are going to do. Eric Solheim, to what extent do you feel, knowing the region as you do, that, that there is something of a turning point, uh, it, it may be a very decisive turning point coming up in this, in this conflict? There is definitely a, a very important turning point at the moment, but let me just comment on the immediate humanitarian uh, suffering, because, I mean, both the LTT and the government must now live up to their obligations, I and mean, the LTT should uh, accept that people leave the zone and they have no right to keep people in the zone against their will. On the, on, on the other hand, the, the government has the obligation to let in uh, the ICRC, I mean the, the, the International Red Cross, let their ship into the zone, let them bring in food, let them bring out uh, people who should medically be, be evacuated, and let the government accept that the UN get access to the zone to do a, a humanitarian uh, uh, study of the, of the situation there. That's what, what's the immediate need uh, to, today. Uh, in the more longer perspective of the next few weeks and months, clearly the government of Sri Lanka is uh, on the verge of a military victory. Uh, they will destroy the Tamil Tigers as a conventional military force. The LTT will no longer be able to control territory in northern Sri Lanka. Uh, but whether they can win the peace is a much more difficult answer to, uh, question to answer. I, unfortunately, I believe that okay. they will win a very important military victory but be far from winning the peace. And to what extent the LTT but will be able to continue with other means is also far too early to, to answer. Let's see what Chala in London has to say. Chala? Yeah, my, my question is... Oh, Thaya, uh, go ahead, Thaya. Uh, I'm, I'm from Sri Lanka. My name is Daya. Okay. My mother has been okay. killed by the Tamil Tigers, but still they are the only representative who can look after the Tamil. You are saying uh, yeah, the government is looking after the Tamils, but all about 100 or 200,000 of Tamils have been stopped by the tigers or have the, uh, whatever reason they kept there, but they, look, they have been looked after. One or two, they complain. That is uh, any way it can happen. Other thing is, uh, what we are hearing from you all is only talk. I, mean, I am fed up. I don't know I am, when I'm okay, watching that, you all. That's new. Ty, yeah. that's an interesting point. Let me let me ask let me ask Dr. Boyle this. What, to what degree do you think, Dr. Boyle, that uh, this this issue, the issue of the, uh, the the humanitarian crisis and the whole Sri Lankan conflict, has been given any real 
uh, sense of priority by the international community, by the U.S., for example, by Europe? Well, Rez, I, I hate to say it, it, it seems to me that the United States, Britain, France, and India uh, have given the government of Sri Lanka the green light to destroy the Tamil Tigers no matter what the cost to the uh, 50,000 uh, uh, innocent Tamils right now uh, at risk as we speak. I hate to say it, but based on my involvement in other international uh, conflicts in the Middle East and the Balkans, uh, it seems they have the green right. light to do this. And that gets back to the need to change that green light to a red light and let's solve the humanitarian crisis okay. first. And then we can sit down and talk about some type of negotiating uh, uh, solution. But if, right. if this destruction goes well, forward, uh, I, yeah. I disagree with Mr. Solheim. I, I think we will see the Dr. tigers Boyle? return to guerrilla um, warfare mm. and no prospect of I peace. To, Dr. Boyle, I have to, I'm sorry to have to stop you there, but I have to, we have reached the end of the show. We will, of course, keep an eye on what's going on there in Sri Lanka and uh, continue this debate at some point in the future as well. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, the leaders of Afghanistan and Pakistan sit down with President Barack Obama next to discuss the situation there. Join us for that on the next show. Thank you.